In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the much anticipated main pre-configuration project. Now, I did actually finish this one quite a few months ago, but because it took me a whole eight months to complete, I didn't wanna look at MAME or touch it again for a little while, which is why it's taken me so long to release the video for it. Now, I could go into detail about exactly what's been done here, but it would take a video about an hour long, and I'm quite sure everybody would just find it boring. So just know that thousands of hours have been spent on this across eight months. With everything been scrutinized, researched, tested, calibrated, configured to the max and have also created a button layout image for every single game. And those button layout images match exactly to what I've set in their configuration files. Now MAME has over 12,000 entries for the arcade side. And obviously some framework needs to be established to cull these down and figure out what to include and what not to include. This was such a huge part of the project. And after culling these 12,000 down, we now have 3,550 or so games to play. Now, just to save some time, if you want to know exactly what that framework is, it's right here. So if you want to know what's been included, what's been done and what hasn't been included, give this a good read. And of course, I will be providing a list of every single game that has been configured for. Now that you know what this project is all about, you're probably going to want to get everything set up. And for this one, we're using LaunchBox. And I would go so far as to say that it's a prerequisite because I provided a custom platform XML with all of these games pre-imported, which will save you a bunch of time. Now you're gonna to want to use as recent main set as possible, ideally the non-merged set. You can use the merged set if you want to, but non-merged generally works straight out the box and they bring additional conveniences. Yes, the non-merged set is bigger than the merged set, but that is just a tiny price to pay for those additional conveniences. Of course, you're also going to need to grab the MAME emulator itself, and you need to make sure that you're downloading the version of MAME that matches your ROM set. And if you don't already have LaunchBox, obviously make sure that you grab that as well. And finally, you need to download my pre-configured files. These are currently available on the LaunchBox forums, and you will need to log in to be able to download these. So make sure that you log in and then hit download this file on the right hand side. We're going to be ignoring these dummy zips for the moment, but you need to make sure that you're downloading all four of these other ones. Firstly, we're gonna set up the MAME side of things, which is super simple. So for this, you need the MAME emulator itself, and from the pre-configured files, the NVRAM folder and the config folder, and make sure that you have all of this unzipped like I've already done here. Then just open up the MAME folder. Then all you need to do is move the NVRAM folder and the config folder into the root of the MAME folder, and that's it. Moving on to the launch box side of things, and obviously you wanna get that installed first, which I've already done here. Then for my pre-configured files, you need the arcade platform XML and the controller layout images, and make sure these are also unzipped. You also need to make sure that LaunchBox is closed down and not running in the background before we add these files. So go ahead and do that and make sure that it's not running in the background at all. And we're gonna add the platform XML first. So just open up the data folder in LaunchBox, go into the platforms folder, and then just move the arcade XML into that platforms folder. Now we can add those button layout images. So make sure you open that folder up, then just go into the images folder of LaunchBox, move this arcade folder into that images folder, and that's it. Once you've done that, you need to actually start LaunchBox up. And on the left hand side, you should see the arcade category and then the actual arcade platform underneath it. And the first thing that we need to do here is point LaunchBox to where our ROM set is located. So make sure that you actually have the arcade platform selected, click on any of these entries and press Ctrl A to select them all. Then go to tools in the top left hand corner, go down to file management, and then click on change ROMs folder path for selected games. Find where your ROMs folder is, select it, and then just press OK. Now we need to add MAME as an emulator to LaunchBox. So just go back up to tools, go to manage and click on emulators. Then click on this add button in the bottom left hand corner. And with the emulator name, of course, we're gonna call this MAME. And with the application path, just click on browse on the right hand side. Find where your actual main executable is for the main emulator and then click on open. Then we want to go up to associated platforms and double check that this checkbox is checked for the default emulator. Then you can click on OK, click yes to this and then just click on close. Now in terms of raw setup, that is everything. It literally couldn't be easier. So from here, you can just double click on any of these entries and play away. And as you can see on the right hand side, you've got my button layout images. So if you just click on this, you can see exactly what the buttons are before you even start playing the game. Now at the moment, this is only set up for X input controllers. So if you're using a PlayStation controller or a different D input controller, you'll need to use something like DS for Windows to spoof that controller into thinking it's an Xbox 360 controller. 
Now I have also spent a significant amount of time on this platform XML. And the way that these have been imported is that there is an entry for every single ROM. So you won't need to expand any entries to get access to those additional versions. As you can see for The Simpsons here, we've got the two player version, the four player version, and the two player Japanese version because it's got slightly different content. And as you can see, I've put which version it is in brackets next to the title. So you know exactly what it is at a glance. Now, because each individual ROM has its own entry, that's really the reason why you should be using a non-merge set. It does bring that extra convenience. If you are using a merge set, I do have a workaround, but I'm not gonna lie, it's dirty. So if you're still intending on using a merge set over a non-merge set, come back to this download page and make sure that you download these dummy zips at the top here. If you unzip that folder and then take a look inside, you can see there's a dummy zip file for every single entry. Because merge ROMs have all of their clones within that main parent zip, LaunchBox doesn't really have anything to grab hold of to launch those clone versions. By adding these dummy zips to your merge set, LaunchBox and MAME have something to actually grab hold of to launch with. Despite these not being the actual ROMs, it doesn't matter. All it's doing is referencing the ROM name. The reason I consider this to be a dirty fix is because we're adding a whole bunch of dummy zip files to a full merged set of ROMs, which is more than likely going to cause you confusion in the future. So I still implore you, use non-merged ROMs for the best possible experience with as minimum issues as possible. But if you are still insistent on using a merged set, when you transfer these dummy files over to your current merged set, make sure you do not replace any files that are already there. So once this is done, make sure that you press skip these files. And I really can't stress that enough. Otherwise, you'll just be overriding your current ROMs with dummy files, which obviously you don't want. These dummy files also come in handy if you're using a different front end. You can use them for your actual import process, and after they're imported, you can direct your front end to where your actual ROMs are located, and then you're done. If you want a full list of every single game that's been included in this configuration, just go up to Tools in LaunchBox, go down to Audit, and click on Arcade. And then it should bring up a list that looks something like this. Then you can just scroll through and see what's included. There we go, that's how to get my main pre-configuration project all set up with LaunchBox. Now if you didn't already know, I've already done this for the Sega Model 2 emulator, the Sega Model 3 emulator, and Flycast, which covers a Thomas Wave and Naomi 1 and 2. And I'll put links for all of those videos in the description below. Now if you find these projects valuable and you want to help keep them alive and stop me from starving to death, my Patreon is in the description below along with the tip jar. And if you found today's video helpful, slam me a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with all of this, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.